Question 1. Mr. Davis, a data scientist, is exploring feature engineering techniques for advanced analytics. He wants to transform categorical variables into numerical representations suitable for machine learning algorithms. Which technique should Mr. Davis use for this purpose? A. Principal Component Analysis, PCA. B. One hot encoding. C. K means clustering. D. Random forest regression. The correct answer is B. One hot encoding. Explanation. One hot encoding is a feature engineering technique used to transform categorical variables into numerical representations suitable for machine learning algorithms. It creates binary columns for each category in the original variable assigning a value of 1 to the corresponding category and 0 to all others. Question 2. Ms. Moore, a data scientist, is evaluating the performance of a predictive model trained on a dataset. She wants to assess the model's ability to generalize to unseen data. Which evaluation metric should Ms. Moore use for this purpose? A. Accuracy. B. Precision. C. F1 score. D cross-validation score? The correct answer is D, cross-validation score. Explanation. Cross-validation score is an evaluation metric used to assess the performance of a predictive model by measuring its ability to generalize to unseen data. It involves partitioning the dataset into multiple subsets, training the model on different combinations of training and validation sets, and computing the average performance across all iterations. Question 3. Michael is deploying a machine learning model for fraud detection in financial transactions. He wants to ensure that the model can provide explanations for its predictions to comply with regulatory requirements. Which of the following techniques is most suitable for achieving this goal? A. SHAP. Shapley Additive Explanations. B. Gradient boosting. C. K means clustering. D. Principal component analysis, PCA. The correct answer is A. SHAP, Shapley Additive Explanations. Explanation. In this scenario, Michael can use SHAP, Shapley Additive Explanations, to provide explanations for the model's predictions. SHAP values quantify the impact of each feature on the model's output, allowing for interpretability and compliance with regulatory requirements in the context of fraud detection. Question 4. David is training a deep learning model for image recognition tasks. He notices that the model is overfitting to the training data, resulting in poor generalization performance. Which of the following techniques can David use to reduce overfitting? A. Dropout regularization. B. Decreasing the learning rate. C. Increasing the number of layers in the neural network. D. Removing the validation set during training. The correct answer is A. Dropout regularization. Explanation. In this scenario, David can use dropout regularization to reduce overfitting in the deep learning model. Dropout randomly deactivates a fraction of neurons during training, forcing the network to learn more robust features and preventing it from relying too heavily on individual neurons, thus improving generalization performance. Question 5. Emily is working on a project that involves sentiment analysis of customer reviews for a retail company. She wants to pre-process the text data before feeding it into a machine learning model. Which of the following preprocessing techniques is most appropriate for this task? A. Lemmatization. B. Stemming. C. Stop word removal. D. TFIDF vectorization. The correct answer is C. Stop word removal. Explanation. In this scenario, stop word removal is the most appropriate preprocessing technique for sentiment analysis. Stop words are common words that carry little semantic meaning and can be safely removed from text data without losing important information relevant to sentiment analysis. Question 6. Mr. Clark, a data scientist, is preparing a dataset for advanced analytics. 
he wants to handle missing values in the dataset before performing feature engineering and modeling. Which technique should Mr. Clark use to impute missing values based on the distribution of the existing data? A. Mean imputation. B. Median imputation. C. Mode imputation. D. K nearest neighbors. KNN imputation. The correct answer is D, K nearest neighbors, KNN, imputation. Explanation. K nearest neighbors, KNN, imputation is a technique used to impute missing values in a dataset based on the distribution of the existing data. It works by identifying the K nearest neighbors to each missing value and averaging or interpolating their values to estimate the missing value. Question 7. Sarah is a data scientist working on a project that involves analyzing customer data to improve marketing strategies. She notices that the dataset contains missing values in several columns. Which of the following techniques is most suitable for handling missing data in this scenario? A. Imputation using the mean or median of the column. B. Dropping rows with missing values. C. Imputation using the mode of the column. D. Ignoring missing values and proceeding with analysis. The correct answer is A. Imputation using the mean or median of the column. Explanation. In this scenario, imputation using the mean or median of the column is the most suitable technique for handling missing data. This approach replaces missing values with the average or median value of the respective column preserving the integrity of the dataset while minimizing the impact of missing values on the analysis. Question 8. What is hyperparameter tuning in the context of machine learning models? A. The process of adjusting the weights and biases of a neural network to minimize prediction errors. B. The process of selecting the most relevant features from the dataset to improve model performance. C. The process of optimizing the parameters that are not learned by the model itself to improve its performance on unseen data. D. The process of increasing the complexity of the model to fit the training data more closely. The correct answer is C. The process of optimizing the parameters that are not learned by the model itself to improve its performance on unseen data. Explanation. Hyperparameter tuning involves optimizing the parameters that are not learned by the model during training. These parameters control the learning process itself, such as the learning rate, regularization strength, or the number of hidden layers in a neural network. Question 9. In the context of advanced analytics, what is the primary objective of data governance and compliance? A. To restrict access to data to only a select few individuals within the organization. B. To ensure that data is stored securely and backed up regularly to prevent loss. C. To establish processes and policies to ensure data quality, integrity, and compliance with regulations. D. To maximize data sharing without regard for privacy concerns. The correct answer is C. To establish processes and policies to ensure data quality, integrity, and compliance with regulations. Explanation. Data governance and compliance play a crucial role in advanced analytics by ensuring that data is managed properly throughout its life cycle. The primary objective is to establish processes and policies that maintain data quality, integrity, and compliance with relevant regulations such as GDPR, HIPAA, or industry-specific standards. Question 10. Ms. Rivera. A data scientist is exploring different machine learning algorithms for predictive modeling. She wants to select an algorithm that can handle nonlinear relationships and complex interactions among features. Which machine learning algorithm should Ms. Rivera consider for this purpose? A. Linear regression. B. Decision tree. C. Naive Bayes. D. K means clustering. The correct answer is B. Decision tree. Explanation. Decision tree is a machine learning algorithm capable of capturing nonlinear relationships and complex interactions among features. It partitions the feature space into hierarchical decision nodes based on the value of different features, 
allowing it to model intricate decision boundaries. Question 11. Which of the following best describes explainable AI, XAI, techniques in the context of model interpretability? A. XAI techniques aim to create models that are so simple that anyone can understand them. B. XAI techniques involve developing models that provide insights into how they arrive at predictions or decisions, making them interpretable by humans. C. XAI techniques focus on black box models exclusively, making them opaque and difficult to understand. D. XAI techniques are only applicable to small datasets and have limited scalability. The correct answer is B. XAI techniques involve developing models that provide insights into how they arrive at predictions or decisions, making them interpretable by humans. Explanation Explainable AI, XAI, techniques are essential in ensuring transparency and understanding of machine learning models, especially when deploying them in critical applications such as healthcare or finance. Question 12. In geospatial analysis, what does the term geocoding refer to? A. Converting geographic coordinates into human readable addresses. B. Representing geographic features as vectors. C. Measuring distances between geographic points. D. Analyzing spatial patterns and relationships. The correct answer is A. Converting geographic coordinates into human readable addresses. Explanation Geocoding is the process of converting geographic coordinates, latitude, and longitude into human readable addresses or place names. It enables mapping systems and applications to translate coordinates into understandable locations, allowing users to interact with geographic data more intuitively. Question 13. In real-world case studies and applications of advanced analytics techniques, what is a common challenge faced by organizations during the implementation of predictive models? A. Lack of domain expertise among data scientists. B. Inadequate computational resources for model training. C. Difficulty in obtaining high-quality labeled data. D. Limited availability of advanced analytics tools. The correct answer is C. Difficulty in obtaining high-quality labeled data. Explanation. A common challenge faced by organizations during the implementation of predictive models in real-world case studies and applications of advanced analytics techniques is difficulty in obtaining high-quality labeled data. Labeled data is essential for supervised learning tasks, where models are trained on input-output pairs to make predictions on new data. Question 14. What is a primary advantage of using deep learning techniques for image recognition tasks? A. They require less computational resources than traditional machine learning algorithms. B. They can automatically extract relevant features from raw data. C. They are less prone to overfitting than shallow learning models. D. They have higher interpretability and explainability. The correct answer is B. They can automatically extract relevant features from raw data. Explanation. Deep learning techniques, such as convolutional neural networks, CNNs, excel at image recognition tasks because they can automatically extract relevant features from raw pixel data without the need for manual feature engineering. Question 15. When applying deep learning models for time series forecasting, which architecture is commonly used for capturing temporal dependencies in sequential data? A. Recurrent neural networks, RNNs. B. Convolutional Neural Networks, CNNs. C. Generative Adversarial Networks, GANs. D. Autoencoders. The correct answer is A. Recurrent Neural Networks, RNNs. Explanation. Recurrent Neural Networks, RNNs, are a type of neural network architecture commonly used for time series forecasting tasks. RNNs are well suited for capturing temporal dependencies in sequential data by maintaining an internal state that represents information from previous time steps. Question 16. Mr. Evans, a data scientist, is performing data preparation for advanced analytics. 
He wants to scale the numerical features in the dataset to a standard range to prevent features with larger scales from dominating the modeling process. Which technique should Mr. Evans use for this purpose? A. Min-max scaling. B. Standardization. C. Robust scaling. D. Log transformation. The correct answer is B. Standardization. Explanation. Standardization is a data preprocessing technique used to scale numerical features to a standard range by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. This technique ensures that all features have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, preventing features with larger scales from dominating the modeling process. Question 17. What is the primary advantage of using interactive dashboards for data visualization? A. They require less computational resources. B. They allow users to explore data dynamically. C. They offer higher accuracy in predictions. D. They are easier to deploy than static visualizations. The correct answer is B. They allow users to explore data dynamically. Explanation Interactive dashboards provide users with the ability to explore data dynamically by interacting with visualizations, filtering data, and drilling down into details. This enables users to gain deeper insights, identify patterns, and uncover hidden trends that may not be apparent in static visualizations. Question 18 What is the primary objective of survival analysis techniques in data science? A. To identify clusters of similar data points for analysis. B. To detect outliers and anomalies in the dataset. C. To predict the time until an event of interest occurs. D. To optimize reinforcement learning algorithms. The correct answer is C. To predict the time until an event of interest occurs. Explanation. Survival analysis techniques in data science are primarily used to predict the time until an event of interest occurs. This type of analysis is commonly applied in medical research, reliability engineering, and business analytics to study the duration until the occurrence of an event such as death, failure, or customer churn. Question 19. In the context of feature importance and interpretability in machine learning models, what technique can be used to identify the most influential features in a predictive model? A. Principal Component Analysis, PCA. B. Recursive Feature Elimination, RFE. C. K means clustering. D. Random Oversampling. The correct answer is B. Recursive Feature Elimination, RFE. Explanation. Recursive Feature Elimination, RFE is a technique used to identify the most influential features in a predictive model by iteratively removing less important features based on their contribution to model performance. RFE ranks features according to their importance and selects the subset of features that maximizes predictive accuracy. Question 20. Which of the following is not a characteristic of streaming data analytics? A. Processing data in real time. B. Handling large volumes of data efficiently. C. Storing all incoming data for future batch processing. D. Providing insights quickly for immediate action. The correct answer is C. Storing all incoming data for future batch processing. Explanation. Streaming data analytics involves processing data in real time, enabling organizations to analyze data as it is generated. It allows handling large volumes of data efficiently by processing data in small, continuous streams. Question 21. What is the purpose of seasonal decomposition in time series analysis? A. To remove randomness from the data. B. To identify underlying trends and patterns. C. To estimate the impact of external factors. D. To handle periodic fluctuations in the data. The correct answer is D, to handle periodic fluctuations in the data. Explanation. 
Seasonal decomposition is used in time series analysis to separate a time series into its seasonal, trend, and residual components. The purpose of seasonal decomposition is to isolate and understand the periodic fluctuations or seasonal patterns present in the data. Question 22. In ensemble learning methods, what is the purpose of combining multiple models? A. To reduce overfitting and improve generalization performance. B. To increase the complexity of individual models for better accuracy. C. To decrease computational complexity and training time. D. To prioritize feature selection and dimensionality reduction. The correct answer is A. To reduce overfitting and improve generalization performance. Explanation. The purpose of combining multiple models in ensemble learning methods is to reduce overfitting and improve generalization performance. Ensemble methods, such as bagging, boosting, and stacking, combine the predictions of multiple base learners to produce a final prediction that often outperforms individual models. Question 23. When handling imbalanced datasets in advanced analytics, what method can be employed to address class imbalance and improve model performance? A. SMOT. Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. B. K-fold cross-validation. C. Principal Component Analysis, PCA. D. Hierarchical Clustering. The correct answer is A. SMOT. Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. Explanation. SMOT. Synthetic minority oversampling technique is a method used to address class imbalance in imbalanced datasets by generating synthetic samples for the minority class. SMOT creates synthetic examples by interpolating between existing minority class instances, thereby increasing the representation of the minority class in the training data and mitigating the effects of class imbalance on model performance. Question 24. What is a key consideration when deploying machine learning models in a production environment? A. Model accuracy during training. B. Model interpretability and explainability. C. Model complexity and computational requirements. D. Model performance on validation data. The correct answer is C. Model complexity and computational requirements. Explanation. Model complexity and computational requirements are critical considerations when deploying machine learning models in a production environment. Complex models with high computational demands may not be suitable for real-time applications or environments with resource constraints. Question 25. In graph theory, what does the degree of a node represent? A. The number of edges connected to the node. B. The weight of the node. C. The centrality of the node. D. The density of the graph. The correct answer is A. The number of edges connected to the node. Explanation. In graph theory, the degree of a node refers to the number of edges connected to that node. It indicates the level of connectivity or the number of adjacent nodes linked directly to the given node. Nodes with higher degrees often play more significant roles in network analysis, as they have more connections and influence over the network structure. Question 26. How do clustering algorithms contribute to unsupervised learning in advanced analytics? A. By predicting the survival time of individuals in a dataset. B. By detecting anomalies and outliers in the data distribution. C by grouping similar data points into clusters based on their characteristics. D. By optimizing reinforcement learning policies through trial and error. The correct answer is C. By grouping similar data points into clusters based on their characteristics. Explanation. Clustering algorithms contribute to unsupervised learning in advanced analytics by grouping similar data points into clusters based on their characteristics. Unsupervised learning techniques aim to discover hidden patterns and structures within datasets without the need for labeled data. Question 27. In Bayesian methods and probabilistic programming for data science, what is the primary advantage of using Bayesian inference over frequentist approaches? 
A. Bayesian inference provides exact probabilistic statements about model parameters. B. Bayesian inference is computationally simpler and more efficient. C. Bayesian inference does not require prior knowledge or assumptions. D. Bayesian inference is less sensitive to sample size. The correct answer is A. Bayesian inference provides exact probabilistic statements about model parameters. Explanation. The primary advantage of using Bayesian inference over frequentist approaches in Bayesian methods and probabilistic programming for data science is that Bayesian inference provides exact probabilistic statements about model parameters. Question 28. Which technique is commonly used for dimensionality reduction in high-dimensional data while preserving the pairwise distances between data points? A. K means clustering. B. Support vector machines, SVM. C. Decision trees. D. Principal component analysis, PCA. The correct answer is D. Principal component analysis, PCA. Explanation. Principal component analysis, PCA, is a widely used technique for dimensionality reduction that aims to preserve the essential structure of the data while reducing its dimensionality. PCA achieves this by finding the principal components, which are orthogonal directions that capture the maximum variance in the data. Question 29. What is the primary goal of sentiment analysis in text analytics? A. To classify text documents into predefined categories. B. To extract and summarize key information from text. C. To determine the emotional tone or sentiment expressed in text. D. To generate text based recommendations or predictions. The correct answer is C. To determine the emotional tone or sentiment expressed in text. Explanation Sentiment analysis, a key component of text analytics and natural language processing, NLP, aims to determine the emotional tone or sentiment conveyed in text documents. Question 30. When considering ethics and bias considerations in advanced analytics, what is a potential consequence of algorithmic bias in decision-making systems? A. Reduced model complexity and interpretability. B. Increased model robustness and generalization. C. Unintended discrimination and unfair treatment. D. Enhanced model performance and accuracy. The correct answer is C. Unintended discrimination and unfair treatment. Explanation. A potential consequence of algorithmic bias in decision-making systems, when considering ethics and bias considerations in advanced analytics, is unintended discrimination and unfair treatment.